Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? Our fourth? I thought we were on the fifth. Oh, okay. Alex Wynn. Hey, John. With all the reporting and guessing going around about why WB acts back, acts back girl, it seems you guys and the New York Post were right. It just wasn't good enough, according to David Zaslav. In the studio investors presentation, Zaslav said they just didn't believe in the film and they won't release films they don't believe in. Do you think this is the right philosophy for a big studio to have? Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Alex. And yeah, listen, when when the news first came down, the very first people to report the story of, of the movie getting axed, it was the New York Post. They were the first one to report it. And they quoted saying that the, I think it was the redeemable, was that the word? I, I yeah, can't remember the exact wording they after used. After test screenings. Uh, then we heard some other outlets report that, yeah, we have talked to people that said the same thing. I reached out to some people on the inside and said, yeah, it really was that bad. Then there was some contrary reporting going around that, well, I think Deadline said, well, our sources said it wasn't that bad. Um, and, and some other things That's as well. That's a sounding vote of confidence. So, <laughs> and then when WB put out their official statement the other day, it just basically said canceling of Batgirl reflects our, our, a change of direction we're taking DC. So even that didn't really give us clear answers. So David Zaslav did give a clear answer now. In the Investor's Day's call yesterday, he kind of laid it up about why exactly that movie got suspended or chopped or axed of Zaslav as it is. This comes to us from the report over at Variety, and they wrote the following. David Zaslav said, we are not going to launch a movie until it's ready, Zaslav said during a Q&A portion of the call when asked directly about Batgirl getting the ax. We are not going to launch a movie to make a quarter, and I want to talk about that statement in a second. We're not going to launch a movie to make a quarter, and we are not going to put out a movie unless we believe in it. I mean, that's it. We did not believe in this movie. We watched it. We put we gave extra money to it. They made some changes to it as they were producing. They changed direction a couple of times, trying to bring this to be something that we feel good about and that we feel we can put out and put our brand label on it. And we just don't believe in this movie. Period. And... All I can say is, this is the type of leadership that we as film fans are always saying we want in our studio heads. When, you know, Jonathan, fact checker Jonathan, producer Jonathan was saying before the show, it's like a movie like Morbius comes out and all the fans are asking, how could they put that out? That was terrible. How on earth, all the fans rightfully asking, how could you put that out? That movie was terrible. You knew it was terrible. How could you put that movie out? So now we've got a studio that says, you know what? We're looking at this. Yeah, we put a lot of money into it. We got a lot of money tied up in this movie. But it is not something that we believe in. And they pulled the plug on it. And then the same fans who went, how could you put out Morbius? They're not going, how could you not put out Batgirl? Because it wasn't good enough to put in front of their fans. It wasn't good enough. And I get it. Those of us who have been fans of DC movies and, and, and Warner Brothers for a long time, we've just been accustomed to, well, they'll just put out whatever they got. And change is uncomfortable. But now we've got leadership in a studio that is actually saying, ah, we don't believe in this movie. Yeah, we poured money into it. Yes, we're going to take a hit. But our fans deserve better. The DC brand deserves better. The fans who are going to pay money to come see the movies we put out deserve better. The fans who are going to take their time out of their day to sit down and click on HBO Max, they deserve better. A, sh a good chef worth his weight, if he sees that a ribeye steak is not done properly, he is not going to let that go out to the customer. A good chef, and we've seen, you know, if you watch a lot of the cooking shows like we do, I, you, you see it happen. You see, that is not something that we can give to the customer. That's going to hurt our reputation. It's going to give the customer a bad experience. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. By the way, can we, let's bring up that quote graphic again. Sure. Because in this quote is a not so veiled shot at former Warner Brothers CEO, Kevin Sujahara. Kevin Sujahara. Actually, bring it back on me for a second. Let me set the context. You guys remember <laughs> back when Justice League was getting ready to come out and Joss Whedon and the other filmmakers and producers pleaded with Warner Brothers to give them more time? 
because it had a November 17th release date and they pleaded for more time to make the movie proper. And the report came out. I believe it was the rap that gave the report that Kevin Sujihara refused to give them more time because the movie had to come out before the end of the year because it reflected his final bonus check that he was getting. Personal gain. So with that in mind, listen to this shot that David Zaslav gets. Let's bring up that quote again. We are not going to launch a movie to make a quarter. And he's not talking about one fourth of a dollar. He's talking about the, the fiscal quarter. Yeah, we are not. I mean, the old Warner Brothers, they did that. We ain't. We're not going to put out a movie just to make a quarter. We're not going to put out a movie just because, oh, well, this will this will give us a little bit of a bump in our financials for the quarter report. No, we're not going to do that. The old leadership did shit like that. And that's why DC right now, right or wrong, fair or unfair, is perceived by the general movie going audience as being second class movies compared to Marvel. We ain't doing that shit anymore. We're not going to do it. And if our product isn't good enough, we are not going to put it in front of our audience. And you know what this reminds me of? You guys ever seen the show Bar Rescue? You ever seen that show Bar Rescue? <laughs> yeah. That's what this situation is. It's like a bar goes, you know what? We're not succeeding. We're not, we're not succeeding. We need somebody to come in and make us succeed. The bar says that? Well, yeah, well, the one, of the owners, yeah one of the owners of the bar. I think. The bar itself speaks like the great trash heap in, in Fraggle Rock. <laughs> well, I need some more help. No. So the bar and the nice owners of the reference. bar, they go, we need some help because we're not doing as well as we should be doing. Let's bring in somebody. So this guy comes in, right? So he comes in and he's like, okay, great. You you want to change because you want to be more successful. Yes, please change things. All right. Well, and if you've ever watched Bar Rescue, he'll say, he'll say something. All right. Well, the first thing you do, you got to take that off the menu. You got to change that shine. And as soon as he tries to start changing things, this happens. You're like, what are you talking about? You're disrespecting the way I run this business and blah, blah, blah. It's like, listen, fuckhead. If you want things to change, then things are going to have to change. Like you can't, like you can just live your life as a fucking titty tassel all you want. But if you want better results, things have to change. You cannot just keep doing things the way you've done and expect the results to change magically. And that's what this is. David Zaslav is the bar rescue guy. And as soon as he comes in, he says, okay, great. We're going to make things better. But to make things better means we have to do things different. And as soon as he starts to do things different, everybody gets uncomfortable, <gasps> right? And I get it. That that happens to all of us. That happens to me. Change is uncomfortable. But um, yeah, so, I got to so tell you. Titty tassels. <laughs> <laughs> titty tassels can be uncomfortable. But I mean, it's... It, it, I, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Guys, I have been an enthusiastic fan and user of Storyblocks for years. I go to them whenever I'm in need of content creation assets like royalty-free music, video clips, or templates for my creative projects, ranging anywhere from little editorial videos to my very own full feature documentary. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories, videos, and projects to life without sacrifices due to time, budget, or access to resources. They have over 1 million different story assets, ranging from stock videos, audio and music, an in-browser video editor, and they feature pre-designed templates, animations, and outros. Storyblocks uses an affordable subscription model and their unlimited access plans offers, well, unlimited video and audio downloads rather than a costly pay-per-clip model. With Storyblocks, you'll be able to create more content and more importantly, better content, all while using a subscription plan that fits your budget, utilizing unlimited downloads of demand-driven and diverse content. So if you're interested in upping your content creation game, head over to W www.storyblocks.com slash campia and get started today. That's www.storyblocks.com slash campia. Listen, I get it. I can sound like I am a David Zaslav fanboy. And if the reason I sound, if I do sound like a David Zaslav fanboy, it's because he is doing everything that we've been saying for years we wanted studios to do. There was even one moment in the call, Rob, where I believe it was the CFO. It was around 52 minutes, 30 second mark of the investor call, where I think it was the CEO, a CFO. I might be wrong about that, but they basically said this too. They said, you know what? We just don't see the economic case 
for making a hundred million dollar movie that's made to go direct to streaming. Nope. We don't see the we don't see how that can be successful. If you make those movies and you put them out theatrically, then they will have more value when they go to streaming. Gosh. Wow, Rob. <laughs> if only somebody else. Wow, John. A couple of other people have been saying that for a couple of years. I mean, that's one of the basic premises of this show. That a theatrically released film gains value it wouldn't otherwise have. We've been saying that for years. And, and that's why when we start talking about where if Warner Brothers good. is now, if it's good, if it's good. That's why when we talk about Warner Brothers right now, I get really excited because they're doing all these things that we've been saying for years we wish a studio would do. And here they are. Now, listen. Things could go south. They could put out the flash and then not fire Ezra Miller. And then my tune is going to change real quick on that. Or the movies they put out are complete crap or whatever. I just love what they're doing. And I love that Zaslav came out and said, look, stop the speculation. You want to know why Batgirl is, got chopped? It's because we don't believe in it. And we are not going to serve up to a long-suffering DC movie fan base something that is not worthy of them. We are not going to do it. The old regime might have done it, but we're not. Anyway, Rob, you, you hear these quotes and everything coming from here. What's your well, take on it? One of the things I love about this situation in general is, you know, William Goldman in his famous book, Adventures in the Screen Trade, said, in Hollywood, nobody knows anything. And that's sort of been sort of a guiding principle. And, and my whole career, such as it is, it is in the entertainment business, I've always heard that. But that is true. The people that are truly successful in this business they do know something. And if you look at producers like, I don't know, Jerry Bruckheimer, you know, the guy was producing American Gigolo and Thief and Cat People and Flashdance and Beverly Hills Cop early in his career. He's one of the most successful producers of all time. Tom Cruise. Whether you like Tom Cruise or not, that man has managed his career. Yeah. Were they during the pandemic, yeah, yes. you are not going to release Top Gun Maverick. Look how that worked out. On streaming. The, on streaming. The people that have... Look at Kevin Feige. The man produced 14 Marvel projects before the MCU started, before 2008. I always say 13, but I forget. There's a Man-Thing movie he also produced. <laughs> 14 films. His job in life is producing Marvel movies. And whether you like Phase 4 or not, Doctor Strange, 900 plus million dollars, almost a billion dollars. Thor is closing in on 700 million, whatever. You look at those, and Wakanda Forever is the 30th movie. The people in Hollywood that are successful know their jobs. They're not running around like, oh, we have to get a trailer company to recut Suicide Squad. You know, they're not doing that. And the studio executives, the people that were hired, they're Ivy League educated business people. I get it. I went to Harvard. I went to Yale. I graduated the, a master's in business. What wow, you know? I didn't know all that. I didn't. I, I'm just you saying. You were way more impressive than I thought. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I didn't. But so they, from a corporate standpoint, they're good hires because they look good on paper. What the hell do they know about making movies? What do they know about storytelling? You know, when I worked at Warner Brothers, and this is a long time ago, but like you had Jim Henson's daughter, Lisa Henson, who was a senior vice president of production. She graduated from like Yale with a degree in comparative mythology. You went into her office, it was full of all kinds of comic books and books, and she knew story, you know, and you could talk to her about these things for, for hours on end. And nowadays, where are all the people that know what they're doing? What David Zaslav is saying, no more of this Mickey Mouse BS. If you're going to come work for Warner Brothers Discovery, you better know your job. You better know what you're going to do. We're going to hire filmmakers that know how to make movies, not people that have done a couple of episodes of TV, music videos, and some commercials. you got to cut your teeth. you got to know. you got to come to the studio and show us that you know how to make movies. And he started with surrounding himself with the best minds in the business because he went out and got the best movie executive of the past 30 years in Alan Horn who shepherded all of Marvel and, and the Disney movies and now he's got him whispering. In and that. Alan Horn will be able to say, here's who you hire. There's like five people that you want to work with. Blah, 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 blah. And they'll go get those people. All this other ridiculousness that goes on is going to end because there's too much money involved. And the great thing about the streaming world is the one thing it's shown is that you can't just throw money at something and expect, like they said on this earnings call, how do you make money at wh where's the, where's the, you made a hundred million dollar movie and you're going to put on streaming. Where's your return? Where is it? And Zaslav come a hundred million. Dude, remember when Terminator two was the only hundred million dollar movie ever made. <laughs> I mean, back in the early nineties, hundred million dollars to make. Oh my God. And they finished it in nine months and get it out on the theater. It's a huge hit. Because it's James freaking Cameron. A hundred million dollars to act like that. Nah. 
whatever. We'll just throw it on streaming. We're going to make a $220 million movie like The Gray Man, which could have been made for $10 million if, like, Craig <laughs> Baxley directed it. It could have been Stone Cold 2, and it would have been just as much fun. Stone Cold too. Stone Cold. Bring Bosworth back. Bring Lance Henriksen back. There was never a Stone Cold 2. They never brought that character <laughs> back. You could make that movie, and it would be just as successful. I mean, maybe not. That's I'm I'm... That's hyperbolic. I'm just saying, why are you spending $220 million on a movie and then not not putting it in theaters? I mean, they did, but not really. It yeah. didn't really. Chris, uh, you you heard like Zazzle's kind of putting in the spec that he just come out and he decided to take it head on, just say, we're not going to put out a movie that we don't believe in. Mm -hmm. Right move, wrong move. Should he have left it speculative so people could keep chattering about it? I don't know. What do you think about this direction? I mean, I understand him coming out with a strong stance on we are going to have certain standards around here now. And I believe that's a great choice, right? Your movie should tick off certain boxes. That being said, the, the bar analogy, right? I know that if I get hair or spit in my drink, that's unacceptable. <laughs> But what if you love a lemon drop and I think that's disgusting and too sugary and I just want a lag of and neat, you know? That's why I married you. <laughs> film is subjective, right? So that's my concern here. And I, I don't mean to be a fly in the ointment on this one, but that's my only concern is I don't love the idea of executives telling me what the standard of a good movie is. Now, that might not be what they're doing, but it just feels like that's a possibility of this is the kind of movie we make. And it leaves a little less wiggle room for different tastes, different auteurs to come in. And so far, it seems like that's what's worked, though, right? Bringing in auteur filmmakers like Matt Reeves. And I'm hoping that having that standard doesn't detract from different, different views on film, different flavors, if you will, right? That's the only thing that makes me a little uneasy here about things that don't meet this level don't get to go to film, like right. go to but theaters. But you look at a situation like Marvel. They do that. The president of Marvel, he decides singularly mm -hmm. what is good enough for us to put out and what is not good enough to put out. And it's worked pretty well for them. For sure. And we're about to get into some of that too, of yes. the plan and everything. But that's that's the only thing that makes me go, well. I don't love Suits being in charge of this, but again, I can only come to this from my own experience as a fan as an, as act, and as an actor, you know? I've never been in those rooms, and I'm thankful I don't have to be. But well, well, I, was, I, thought. I, I was just to say quickly that Suits, though, it's their job to know who to hire. That's yeah. fair. You know, and, and that's, I think, that the great, the great moguls of yore would know who to put with what project to make sure that it, it's good. And the problem is, the people that are in charge of studios, well, they worked in the, uh, the, the the theme park version of, now they're the head of the studio. Well, what do they know about picking filmmakers to make movies? Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this whole thing? Warner Brothers CEOs now come out and said, yeah, straight up, we canceled Batgirl because we don't believe in it. I mean, what do you think about that? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comments section below and leave those thoughts there.